What's up? This is Danny from Plug and Play, and today we're going to be going over the Data Mosh 2 Mosh Map Markers. This is a way to add much more finesse and control over your data moshes. We do this by rendering out a separate footage file and looking at the black and white values of that file in order to determine which sections of your data mosh are being moshed. Imagine rotoscoping out certain sections of footage and only moshing over those certain sections, or using a depth map to create an artificial sense of depth in your scene and using those black and white values to control the moshing of your data mosh. Really cool stuff. We're going to cover all of it and more in this tutorial, so stay tuned. All right, so we're inside of After Effects here, and let's start going over the basic mechanics of how these mosh map markers work. So as you can see inside of the scene, I have this footage layer of some drone footage of a parking lot and I sped it up a little bit here. And then to the right of that, I have these two different layers. We're going to start out with this gradient layer here to get you guys an idea of how these mosh map markers work. So let's go ahead and we're going to add a new mosh marker inside of Data Mosh 2. And I'm going to make it the length of this underlying footage here. Great. And then let's go ahead and drop down this menu and we're going to toggle on this use map uh, toggle here. That is going to create a new map marker inside of our composition. And the way that this map marker works is that it signals which part of the composition we want to additionally render and use for the uh, intensity values of our underlying mosh here. So let's go ahead, I'm going to make this the same length of our original mosh marker here, and I'm going to drag it over this additional layer that is just this gradient. So now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and go back to Data Mosh 2. I'm going to change this to be move vertical, and let's set this to be negative 100 or so. Great. And now that we have all of this set up, I'm going to hit the Data Mosh button. So this is going to first render out our original footage that we want to have moshed. And again, that's signaled by that original mosh marker. So once we have that first footage rendered out, it's going to look at the map marker and it's going to render out the footage that's underneath that map marker. Then it's going to take it into Data Mosh 2. It's going to prime both clips for being Data Moshed. And once we have those two clips primed, it's going to strip out all of the information from every single frame of this map footage that we rendered out. And it's going to look at the values of the black and white pixels. And it is going to then mosh that first piece of footage that we rendered out according to those values. So as you can see, Data Mosh 2 is doing the moshing right now. So as you can see, we just had that imported back into After Effects, and you can see that we have this kind of gradient uh, mosh intensity going on here. And again, that's because with values from this uh, underlying map footage that was rendered out, the values that are 100% black will have 0% intensity. So that's why you can see on the left side of the composition here, we are seeing no moshing going on whatsoever. And then values that are 100% white will have 100% intensity. And that's why we have the most amount of moshing going on on the right hand side over here. And then in the middle, we have this gradient effect of different uh, mosh intensity values being assigned to the correlating pixels being mosh. So really cool way to get some granular control over what parts of the uh, footage you want to have mosh. And this is kind of the essence of what is going on with these map markers. So let's go ahead, let's try a different example. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this grid layer turn it up to 100%, we'll get rid of this gradient layer, and now you can see we have a grid of black uh, background and white squares. So wherever these white grid squares or grid rectangles are, uh, we're going to have 100% mosh intensity. So we can go ahead, I'm going to use the previous render, which means that we ha won't have to render out this original footage anymore, it will just render out this map footage. So let's go ahead, I'm going to click Data Mosh, and let's see what we get. Dope. So we just had that new mosh layer inserted back into our timeline. And as you can see, 
throughout this mosh, the only parts of the composition that are being moshed are where those white grids appear. So we have this really cool grid effect going on inside of our mosh layer. And if I go ahead and I take this grid layer and bring it up top, bring it over here, and let's turn down the transparency a little bit, you can see that wherever these uh, squares are, that are these rectangles, that is where the mosh is appearing inside of our composition. So very cool stuff. Let's go ahead and jump over to example two. So I have this footage of this cool dude holding this uh, LED triangle, and it looks really nice backing up here. And I'm thinking, wow, it'd be really sweet if we could start data moshing this uh, footage, but not where uh, the inside of this triangle appears. So let's go ahead and I'll jump over to our uh, map layer here. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and let's turn off this fill effect real quick. I've gone ahead and I've rotoscoped out the triangle from this footage and I've added this white background below it. So when I add this fill, now when we reference this in our map layer, the data mosh 2 is going to be looking at every single frame and wherever there are black pixels, there will be 0% intensity or zero moshing going on. And whenever there are white pixels, we will see 100% intensity from the data mosh appearing. So let's go ahead, we'll go back to data mosh 2, make a new mosh marker. We're going to extend it to the length of our work area. And then let's go inside of that mosh uh, module and we will toggle on that use map feature right here and again we're going to extend that map to be as long as our footage is here or our work area and then i'm going to just drag it over to where this rotoscoped uh, black and white footage starts to appear great and let's go inside of our uh, preset and we'll go ahead and we'll go to zoom and let's do zoom sign we'll do negative 80 here great so now that we have everything set up we're going to be rendering out this footage first and then the mapped layer the data mosh 2 is going to be looking at all of the pixels from every single frame and telling data mosh where to mosh that original footage that we rendered out so let's go ahead and hit data mosh Sweet, so after we got that data mosh completed, we baked it using data mosh 2, and then it is automatically inserted back into our timeline. And let's see how this looks. So if we start playing through, you can see that wherever that triangle is in the middle, there's no moshing going on, but everything outside of that triangle is getting this super trippy uh, sign zoom going on. And that's, again, all controlled by this map layer here where we are only moshing where there are white values and whenever there are black values 100 percent black values we have zero uh, percent intensity which results in this super cool uh, effect going on here so that's great really cool stuff that we can do while using rotoscoping and telling data mosh to which parts of the clip we want moshed and which parts we don't want moshed Great, so let's jump over to our next example here. And in this one, I have this beautiful woman just playing with her hair and this super cool uh, rainbow light that's coming in across her face. And for this effect, we're going to use a, uh, a plugin called Depth Scanner. And what Depth Scanner does is it uses artificial intelligence to look at footage and come up with an artificial depth map of that scene. So let's go ahead and go over to our mapped layer here. And because this is running on Mac and because it's artificial intelligence, it takes a little bit to uh, actually process the renders. But as you can see, when we just drop this effect onto our uh, original footage layer, we get this really cool depth map that's generated using artificial intelligence and rendered inside of After Effects here. And this can be great for using this uh, map functionality inside of Data Mosh 2 because we can then use these Luma values, these brightness black and white values to control the moshing inside of our scene. So I dropped on this effect. Here are some of the parameters that I've used. Again, I'm keeping it pretty similar to the defaults, and then I'm actually inverting it because the original output from Depth Scanner provides the closest 
uh, objects to the camera at white values and then the objects further in the scene as black values. So we're just going to invert that so that the closest uh, objects in our scene are not being moshed at all or only being moshed a little bit with this grayscale value going on here. And then these uh, furthermost portions of the scene, this uh, white value that we have here where we will have all of the moshing going on. So if I go over to Data Mosh 2, as you can see, I've already set up this uh, this scene for the moshes. I've got this zoom sign going on. I added the map and I added the map uh, section to be over that depth scanner effect. And once we have all of this set up, I'm going to keep the intensity at 100. And if I render this out, which I actually did just before this tutorial, you can see that we get this really trippy, clean data mosh going on. And this is happening where only the background is really being moshed and these closest, the closest objects in the scene have that black value, so they are therefore not being moshed at all. Very quick, very easy to do. We're just dropping this effect onto some footage, assigning uh, the proper black and white values and we're, we are getting this beautiful output and this can be done very quickly. And just below this we have a, another render that we did and this is where we are having the original output of depth scanner where the closest objects in the scene uh, not being inverted so they are white and as you can see uh, they have the most mosh intensity here. So we get this really weird looking uh, data mosh here, but super fun, super cool. Again, the possibilities are endless with a workflow like this. Cool. So let's jump over to our next example here, uh, second from the last. And as you can see in this uh, example, I have this footage here of uh, some drone footage of a scene. And again, I'm going to be using the depth scanner tool on this in order to get an artificially made depth map that I can then use to control the moshing with Data Mosh 2. Cool. So for this project, I actually uh, am using two layers of footage here, uh, both of which have the depth scanner effect on it. But with depth scanner, you can do something really cool, which is called slicing. So again, this effect is pretty resource intensive, it may take a little bit to render, especially here on Mac, which I just launched, uh, used to be Windows, Windows only. Now we have Mac capability inside a depth scanner. So bravo, good job guys. Great, so on this top most layer here, we have the depth scanner effect using the slicing mode, and we are just keyframing between the uh, maximum values of zero and 100% here. And what that does, if I turn on this layer, you can see that this tool is slicing through the depth map, and it is able to render uh, just certain slices of a depth map that it artificially generated. So we are taking that depth map that is being sliced here, and we are then uh, using an additional depth map to use as a track mat for this slicing that's going on. So we have this original depth map that is looking like the one that we generated from example four, uh, but we're only showing that for where this slicing is going on. Once we have this set up, and again, I already have this set up with Data Mosh 2 with our uh, intensity at negative 300. I have the use map set up. I have this slicing going on here. And as you can see, I'm just scrubbing through here and we're just slicing different portions of this depth map uh, and then mapping the original depth map to that mat. That's the workflow here. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and hit data mosh. I've actually already done it. So we can just pop open the rendered footage here and get an idea of how this effect is going to look once we have it all rendered out in data mosh. So as you can see, we're going through the, the, um, the slicing of depth scanner and we are going to be only moshing for when that slicing comes on. So we get this really cool effect that adds this artificial depth to our mosh here. And we are also applying the depth map RGB or Luma values 
to the intensity of that mosh. So we get this really cool slicing data mosh effect here where objects that are further in the scene have a lower intensity than the values closer to the scene, which just gets this really cool parallax almost style here going on. Depth Scanner and Data Mosh 2, when combined, can do some really cool stuff. The sky's the limit with this type of stuff. You can get super creative with these different moshes using these two effects combined together. But let's pop over to example seven. For this example, we're actually going to be using just a picture, so no footage inside of this one. Instead of using Depth Scanner, maybe you don't have it, maybe you are looking for a free alternative, you can actually accomplish this depth mat effect using a picture and using Photoshop. Here is the depth map that we generated using Photoshop, and I'll show you all how to do that real quick. If we go to the original footage here, the original photograph, we can just do open with Photoshop. Cool. So here it is. Uh, and then if we go and we're going to apply a neural filter to this, and that is located in the window menu filter and then neural filters, select it. We can go ahead, pop this open and you'll have to download the depth blur effect here, but we can turn that on. This is originally for just adding like this artificial blur to your scene using the depth neural effect so as you can see we have like this really cool blur that's added but we what we actually want is just this output depth map only and as you can see this is what it generates uh, we import that back into after effects and we're going to use that as the map layer for this photograph so if i go ahead set up the scene and inside of data mosh 2 you can see that we already have the move vertical effect we have the intensity at negative 250 and then most importantly we have this use map toggle and we have all of the uh, markers set up accordingly and then once you data mosh this we'll just pop this open because i've already done it you can see that we're getting again this really cool parallax effect almost with our mosh because the values that are furthest away in our scene have the whitest values which means the most intense and the objects that are closest in this in the composition like this hotel are not being moshed at all because of how much of the uh depth map is black during this portion of the of the footage so really cool stuff there's a bunch of different ways that you all can implement this this is just a few of them the sky's the limit with this again Really, you can try this with text effects, with rotoscoping, with, uh, you know, different, you know, let's call it a fractal noise that you are uh, rotating through the evolution of and assigning just random parts of the footage to be mosh. So, so much different cool stuff you all can do with this. I hope that I've given you some insight into how this effect of Data Mosh 2 works, how you can use it in your own workflow. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're always happy to hear from fans and from fellow After Effects enthusiasts who want to get the most out of After Effects. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.